growing up, was there someone that you may have looked at? You're like, you know what? I would like to play like him. Definitely Kevin Durant. That's probably the person I watched the most. Four years ago, I was in a very tough spot. I just dropped out of my dental program. I had no purpose, no future. I tried to make YouTube content for the past like nine years and it wasn't really going well for me. Luckily for me, when I left dental school, I made one change where I went from creating basketball gaming content to basketball content. This one change completely altered my life and altered my career. From the very beginning, the very first video I made, D'Angelo Russell signing with the Golden State Warriors, you guys supported me. You guys supported me through my mistakes. You guys supported me through aggressive titles. You guys always gave me positive feedback and you guys stuck by me as I made my mistakes and grew into the creator I am today. Each and every day, we are committed to creating the best basketball content to keep you up to date on the world of basketball. And for that, you guys rewarded me with 800,000 subscribers. And words cannot describe my gratitude for you guys. There are times where I still can't believe this is my job. Each and every day, each and every year, I count how long I've been doing this job. And I still have the same childlike enthusiasm from day one, and it wouldn't be possible without you guys. So to celebrate the fact that we hit 800,000 subscribers, we're gonna be announcing giveaway winners on my community tab within the next 48 hours. And I also apologize for the drawn out intro. Now that we get all of that out of the way, cue the intro. The NFL and NBA season are officially over, and I need something to hold me over until at least the NFL season comes back. So I've been playing prize picks for the WNBA and the MLB, and I've been fairly successful. It's a good way to get some extra action on games that I wouldn't really watch otherwise. I post my picks onto my Instagram story daily, and I've been hitting on a decent amount of them. And right now, when you use my promo code microphone, they'll double your deposit up to $100. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? At at this point, we could all agree the Phoenix Suns is officially everybody's favorite science experiment in the NBA. Kevin Durant somehow, some way, left a super team with the Golden State Warriors to create another super team, at least at a specific point, with the Brooklyn Nets. And once that failed, he got traded to the Phoenix Suns, who proceeded to build an offensive-minded super team around Kevin Durant. And I'm not here to roast the Phoenix Suns, although I will admit I think this situation is very entertaining and I can't wait wait to see how it pans out. And I guess you could also say they have a very defensive-minded head coach in Frank Vogel, which is why they fired Monty Williams to begin with. The one critique we had on this team originally was the fact that they were probably going to have little to no depth as a result of, one, having Kevin Durant on a max contract, two, having DeAndre Ayton on a rookie max contract, three, having Devin Booker on a super max contract, and more recently, trading for Bradley Beal, who is also currently on a Supermax contract. Now, fortunately for the Phoenix Suns, I have to admit, they made some very slick decisions as well to ensure that they get some semblance of depth in addition to Bradley Beal. I mean, in the Bradley Beal trade, they got Jordan Goodwin and Isaiah Todd. They didn't need to give up much to get Bradley Beal to begin with. But the number one question that everyone had was what were the Phoenix Suns going to do for depth behind the core four of Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and DeAndre Ayton? And and to be honest, I was very, very impressed by the haul that they brought in. On the 4th of July, they were able to sign Keita Bates-Diop and Yuta Watanabe. They were able to bring back Drew Eubanks. They somehow were able to get Damian Lee to take a pay cut to remain with the team. And most impressively, they were able to sign Eric Gordon, but they weren't finished there. They re-signed Josh Okoge and they re-signed Saban Lee. Now, of course, none of these players necessarily strike terror into anyone's heart. I mean, Eric Gordon is going to turn 35 this year, but he has always been a reliable three-point shooter. Yuta Watanabe is an exceptional three-point shooter as well. The fact that they were able to retain Damian Lee and Josh Okoge is also very big. The one critique that I personally have always had about Kevin Durant is the fact that he seems to get himself into the same trap over and over and over again. I mean, comedian Ryan Davis said it best when he absolutely cooked Kevin Durant for the fact that he always went from offensive-minded team 
team to offensive minded team and right when he was on a defensive minded team the golden state warriors they were able to win a championship following that he once again went to the brooklyn nets who were extremely offensive minded and now it seems like he might be falling for the same trap again there's a lot of questions and criticisms about the phoenix suns and as a basketball fan i will say this repetitively i am here to see whether or not this is going to work out originally we thought the phoenix suns were going to be getting players like jabari parker and stanley johnson and i have to admit their supporting cast is significantly better than what i thought but there is the question who is going to back up deandre ayton and kevin durant are you going to count on drew eubanks are you going to try to bring back bismack biombo what is the plan for this phoenix suns team on top of that how are they necessarily going to utilize bradley beal and devin booker and kevin durant and deandre ayton who's their point guard well we have a lot of answers for you here again this goes against my team building philosophy the denver nuggets won an nba championship based off of their depth the golden state warriors won the year prior based off of their depth but again super teams are really entertaining and are always an intriguing storyline for the nba so i'm here for it so the question is the phoenix suns more or less look complete there are still some holes on their roster for one who's going to play point guard for this team for two who's going to back up deandre ayton and kevin durant well we've been following the storyline of bull bull quite extensively on this channel and he just had the season of his career for the orlando magic even more importantly he also once said this about who his favorite player was growing up was there someone that you may have looked at you're like you know what i would like to play like him definitely kevin durant that's probably the person i watched the most because for him his size and his, his ability to uh, to be able to do everything at that size. And that's just like the person I watched the most growing up. Bull Bull's in a very unique situation. If he stayed healthy throughout the 2019 NBA draft, he would have without a doubt been a top five pick. The problem is injuries have always plagued his career. And then the teams that he was on didn't necessarily place a huge point of emphasis in developing him. Orlando Magic were loaded at the forward position. So there was no point in bringing Bull Bull back, which means that Bull Bull once again hit free agency this off season and there was a question about who he was going to join. We found out a couple days ago that the Phoenix Suns were front runners to sign Bull Bull, but I didn't want to bring you the information until the news became official. And ladies and gentlemen, today the news did officially become official. The Phoenix Suns made a myriad of moves today. The first one being the fact that they signed Bull Bull to a one-year deal with the Phoenix Suns. At 23, Bull had his best NBA season with Orlando. 9.1 points, 5.8 rebounds, 1.1 blocks in 21 and a half minutes. Another developed of being talent to join a deepened bench rotation. So for me, I think this is kind of a no-brainer for Bull Bull. He gets to watch Kevin Durant and maybe he could learn a thing or two from Kevin Durant and it could be another step in his development. I don't necessarily know how much playing time he can expect as a result of this, but regardless, I feel like he's on an upward trend following his season with Orlando last year and this is a very pivotal year for him and his development. Phoenix Suns are gonna have no choice but to play Bull Bull. They don't have that much depth behind Kevin Durant for the power forward position and even more so Bull Bull could be a very intimidating and imposing defensive piece when Kevin Durant goes to the bench and you know Frank Vogel is going to make the most out of Bull Bull's ability so I think this is a remarkable move for him and I'm rooting for him I am rooting for the Chet Holmgrens and the Bull Bulls and the Victor Webin Yamas to crush it in the NBA Adrian Wojnarowski continued to say that the Phoenix Suns are acquired Acquiring three future second round picks from Orlando for a 2026 first round pick swap, sources tell ESPN. So this was more of a sign and trade type of situation. But in addition to this, this wouldn't be the only move that the Phoenix Suns would make today. They made a very interesting move in addition to this, which we'll get to in just a second. Woj would close this off by saying across the past two weeks, the Phoenix Suns have replenished draft capital post Durant and Beal trades. They've added six second round picks to go with the four for first rounders in the team's arsenal and another good young player in Bull Bull. Now, what's interesting about this is this wouldn't be the only move that the Phoenix Suns would make today. As a matter of fact, the Phoenix Suns would trade yet another one of their guards on their team by trading campaign to the San Antonio Spurs in return to the three aforementioned second round picks, which would also get the Magic the first round pick swap. So the Phoenix Suns were very, very focused on replenishing those second round picks that they traded 
traded for Bradley Beal. They also added some more confusion as to what their point guard situation is going to look like. So what is the Phoenix Suns plan at this point? Well, it's very unique, I have to admit. And Shams Charania covers it all in this article from The Athletic. The Suns signed Bol Bol to a one-year deal Bradley Beal projected as the starting point guard. Sources, ooh, this is gonna be interesting. The Phoenix Suns signed free agent center Bol Bol to a one-year fully guaranteed deal. Here's what you need to know. In a series of moves, Phoenix also traded guard campaign a second round pick and cash to the San Antonio Spurs for a future second round pick, as well as acquired three second rounders from Orlando for a draft pick swap per league sources. Expect the Suns to be active in the future to use the new second rounders for moves to improve the roster. Well, duh. I wanted to take a side note here and say, I love this move for the San Antonio Spurs. Campaign definitely fits within the Greg Popovich system. I feel like this is an upward trend for campaign's career. I mean, going from a team that is focused on winning a championship to a team that is primarily focused on the development of Victor Webanyama, I feel like there will be more longevity for campaign on the San Antonio Spurs and he'll have an elevated role there. So I think this is a huge win for him as well. But this Bradley Beal situation is very unique to me. Bradley Beal will enter the 2023 to 2024 training camp as the Suns projected starter at point guard. That is very interesting. Throughout Bradley Beal's career, he has been a solid distributor. He isn't necessarily Chris Paul by any means, but to give you an idea, in Bradley Beal's entire career, he's averaged 4.3 assists per game. Last year, he averaged 5.4 assists per game, and the year before, he had a career high 6.6 .6 assists per game. But this is also on a depleting Washington Wizards team, whose best players were Bradley Beal, Kyle Kuzma, and Kristaps Porzingis. So I'm really interested in seeing how Bradley Beal will be able to perform as the team's point guard. I mean, you might as well say Kevin Durant is your starting point guard or point forward at this point because they have similar assist numbers throughout their entire careers. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Team sources tell The Athletic that the Suns like Jordan Goodwin as a backup point guard who was acquired in the Beal trade. There's $30 million in tax savings for Phoenix by trading Payne. So you get an idea of why they traded campaign. This clearly makes them weaker, but it saves them $30 million in the luxury tax. And with the new CBA, they're kind of more harsh in regards to luxury tax. Now, here's what's a little weird about the situation. We don't have a lot of tape on Jordan Goodwin. Jordan Goodwin played one full season this past year, 18 minutes per game, averaged 6.6 .6 points per game and shot 32% from three and 45% from the field and dished 2.7 assists. You can't necessarily grade a player based off of that. He's about to turn 25 years old this year. So this is a make or break season for Jordan Goodwin. This is a huge opportunity. He's going to go play with a bunch of superstars and maybe he could find a role for himself in the NBA if he makes the most of this opportunity. It's not necessarily a situation or a plan that strikes fear into opposing teams' hearts. This is a clear indication that the Phoenix Suns lack depth. You're having Bradley Beal, whose natural position is a two guard, play the point guard. Now, whether or not this is going to work is something that we're going to have to wait and see. In addition, to this, you have Jordan Goodwin as a backup point guard. Ironically speaking, the Phoenix Suns point guard position is pretty much where it was four years ago. Once again, they don't have a true and natural playmaker. They opted to sell that playmaker in order to bring in Bradley Beal. Now, is that going to work? We'll have to wait and see. At the end of the day, at the very worst, they get significantly younger by making this decision. But I will admit the fact that they don't have a proven floor general or a proven playmaker on the team, which don't get me wrong, Bradley Beal, very capable. Kevin Durant, very capable. But like you have three players that are just really freaking good scorers. I don't know the last time I've seen a situation where that has worked out. In addition to that, you're so thin at the point guard position that you're running Bradley Beal at point guard and Jordan Goodwin as a backup point guard. On top of that, you have a defensive minded head coach. So I really am curious to see what the offense is going to look like in Phoenix. At the end of the day, I want you guys to know that I am not predicting of Phoenix Suns failure, I am just drawing parallels to the past. The last time Kevin Durant was on a team like this was the Brooklyn Nets when they had James Harden and Kyrie Irving, and that failed. You could obviously blame injuries, but that ultimately ended up failing. And that's not to take away from the offseason that James Jones had for the Phoenix Suns. Bringing back Josh Okoge was a remarkable move. He shot 34% from three last year, but he was a relatively
a weak spot in the playoffs. Keita Bates Diop is one of the most underrated additions to this team. Shot 39% from three last year. Sabin Lee, 37% from three in the limited time that he had for the Phoenix Suns last year, but throughout his career, a 29% three point shooter. Yuta Watanabe, we already talked about him earlier in this video. So I guess Damian Lee being brought back on the contract that he was brought back on was remarkable. So for what James Jones had after paying four players the max or the super max is remarkable. And I have to give James Jones credit where credit is due. In terms of the amount that he had to spend on role players, he came back with a hell of a haul. Is it one of the better benches in the NBA? I, I don't necessarily know. It's definitely better than I expected though. And if Eric Gordon could continue at the rate that he was playing at before joining the Phoenix Suns, then there are going to be some games where the bench could pick up the slack for the starting five. But regardless, I'm going to call this like it is. It's a mad scientist experiment. And to be honest, I'm here for it. I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about all this? Do you think the Phoenix Suns will win the NBA championship this year? Or do you think that this team is doomed from the start? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.